it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we go. Chapter 14, lesson number three, the chain rule with trig. What we've been doing in the first couple of lessons in this chapter is differentiating our trig terms, a sine x and cos x, and we've also looked at the chain rule as well, using that to differentiate. What we're going to do now is put them both together. So, sometimes we have to apply the chain rule in order to differentiate trig terms, the sine x and the cos x that we have been doing. When we do this, really, the rules remain the exact same, but first, it helps to include brackets. So if you remember, these are the rules for using the chain rule. You differentiate outside the brackets, you differentiate inside the brackets, and then you multiply both parts together. Let's try an example then. Example 1, differentiate y equals sine 5x. Now here, really, we're wanting the sine of 5x, the 5x is together, so when we're thinking about brackets, really we're imagining brackets around that 5x. It's the sign of that whole thing, the whole 5x. So differentiating outside the brackets, well, we've got the sign of something. So if you differentiate outside, sine goes to, well, when you differentiate, you go down, so sine goes to cos. So that's going to become cos, and then keep the brackets just as they are. So it's cos 5x. However, We've got the brackets, so we're thinking of chain rule, differentiate outside the brackets, then inside, then multiply them together. Differentiate inside the brackets, so differentiate 5x and you'd get 5. So multiply the cos of 5x by 5. Don't leave it as that. You'd put 5 to the front and write it as 5 cos 5x. Example 2, differentiate y equals cos 3x. So for this, again, think about it. Where would the brackets go in this one, Chelsea? around the 3x, perfect, because it's the cos of that whole thing, the whole of the 3x. So differentiating outside the brackets dy by dx would equal cos, if you differentiate cos, it goes to negative sine, so that becomes a negative sine, keep the brackets as they are, so negative sine 3x, but then differentiate inside the brackets. Differentiating 3x will give us 3, so we're going to multiply that by 3. Again, don't leave it as that, put the 3 to the front, so it becomes negative 3 sine 3x x. Example 3, differentiate y equals cos, and in brackets we've got 3 minus x. So once again we've got the brackets here, so we're thinking about the chain rule. We've also got the trig term, so we're having to think about that. So differentiate straight away, dy by dx would equal, if you differentiate cos, well if you think here you've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, differentiate, you go down, cos would go to negative sine. So we'll have negative sine and keep the brackets just as they are. So it's 3 take away x. After that, we differentiate outside the brackets. Now differentiate inside. What do you get if you differentiate 3 minus x, Medeja? Good, you get minus 1. So you're going to multiply that by a negative 1. From there then, you've got the negative here. You've got the negative here. They will both cancel, leaving you with sine 3 minus x. And that is your answer. Example 4, differentiate f of x equals sine, in brackets, x squared plus x. So for this one, once again, we've got the brackets, we've got our trig terms. We don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, we don't have any roots, so we can go straight in to differentiating. So f dash x would equal, so differentiate outside the brackets, so sine something. Well, sine would go to cos, so we'll have cos something. So in other words, cos and keep the brackets as they are. But then after that, you want to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. Differentiate what is in the brackets, and x squared plus x would differentiate to 2x plus 1. So we're going to multiply that by 2x plus 1. Don't forget to put brackets around that, otherwise you would just be multiplying by the 2x, when you want to multiply by the whole thing. From that, just going to put the 2x plus 1 first, so it becomes 2x plus 1 in brackets, and then you've got cos of x squared plus x. Example 5, differentiate f of t equals sine squared t. So first of all, again, you want to think, right, well, where are the brackets with this one? Help us out, Erin, where are the brackets? Yeah, you could write that as sine t squared. So the first thing to do is to rewrite it, include these brackets. Sine squared t means sine t times sine t, or sine t squared. From there then, well, we don't have t in the bottom of a fraction, we don't have any root signs, so we can go straight into differentiating. So here you want to bring the power down, so that it's going to become 2 sine t, and your power will decrease, so it'll become to the power of 1. But then 
you're wanting to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. Differentiate sine, so there's sine, differentiate, you go down, that becomes cos, so it becomes cos t, and you'd multiply them together. That therefore will give you 2 sine t cos t. Would you leave it as that, or could you take it any further? Could anybody see where that would go? Well done, Andrew. Perfect. Think back to the rules, and that there becomes sine 2 t. Well done. If you think back to the different formulae that we learned when we were looking at sine 2x and cos 2x, how you can expand them, if you expand sine 2x, it becomes 2 sine x cos x. So going back the way, if you've got 2 sine t cos t, well, that's the same as t sine 2t. Well done. You could always get down to this line. You'd probably get the marks for that. Uh, this one here, though, if it was a trickier question, you would have to be able to go on and answer that as well. Let's try another one. Example 6, differentiate f of x equals cos cubed x. So the first thing you want to do with this is again rewrite it. Cos cubed x means cos x all cubed. Once you've got the brackets and we've got the trig terms, we're going to be thinking about the chain rule. So differentiate outside the brackets. So the 3 will come down, we'll leave the brackets as they are, and we'll decrease the power by 1. From there, after that, we've differentiated outside the brackets, now differentiate inside, so differentiate cos, and cos will go to negative sine x. So you multiply that by negative sine x. From there then, you would have negative 3 cos squared x, just rewriting the cos x all squared as cos squared x, and we're multiplying by the sine x. We just move the negative to the front, and that would be your answer. Example 7, differentiate f of x equals 1 over cos x. So for this, what would you do first? Brilliant, you'd have to move the cos x up to the top line. So for that, cos x, if you imagine that in brackets, is cos x to the power of 1, move it up to the top line, and you'd have cos x to the power of negative 1. From there, we've not got x in the bottom of a fraction, we don't have any root signs, so now we can differentiate. So differentiating f of x will give us f dash x. Differentiate outside the bracket, so bring the power down, take one off the power, so we'd have negative 1 times the cos x to the power of negative 2, and we're going to be multiplying that by the derivative of what's in the brackets. Differentiate cos x, and you get negative sine x. Well done. So you multiply by negative sine x. From there, the two negatives will cancel out, and you'd have the sine x times cos x to the power of negative 2. But remember, you're best to write with a positive index, so move the cos x to the power of negative 2 down to the bottom, so it'll leave us with sine x over cos squared x. And that is your answer. Example 8, differentiate f of x equals 5x minus 2 cos x all to the power of 4. So for this one, we don't have any root signs, we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, so we can jump straight in to the chain rule. So differentiating, we get f dash x. If you bring the power down, it becomes the 4 at the front, and you would decrease the power by 1. Remember, leave the brackets as they are. So we're going to have 4 brackets, 5x take away 2 cos x to the power of 3. After that, you differentiate what is inside the brackets. So put brackets around your answer because you've got two terms and you want to multiply it by the whole thing. So differentiate 5x and you would end up with a 5. If you differentiate negative 2 cos x, well negative cos x, if you differentiate that, it will go to positive sine x. So you will end up with plus 2 sine x. And that is what you would get. Example 9, differentiate f of x equals 1 over 3x minus 2 over root sine x. So for this one, we do have root signs, we do have x's in the bottom of a fraction, so we need to get rid of them, we need to rewrite them. So, you've got 1 over 3x, first thing to do is to move the x up to the top line, so we'd have the 1 third, just as it is, and we're moving x up from the bottom to the top, so x to the power of 1 would become x to the power of negative 1. Do the same thing with the sine x. Well, it's sine x to the power of a half just now because we're square rooting it. If you move that up, the power of a half would become to the power of negative a half. So we're taking away 2 sine x to the power of negative 1 half. After that, we can then differentiate. So differentiating the third x to the negative 1 will bring the power down. Take 1 off the power. So we'd have negative 1 third x to the power of negative 2. And then we're going to have a takeaway. If you differentiate uh, here, we'll differentiate outside the brackets. 
So we've got the negative 2 times the negative 1 half. So negative 2 times negative 1 half. And leave the brackets as they are. So you'd have the sign x. Take one off the power and it would become negative 3 over 2. From there, you differentiate what is inside the brackets. So differentiating sine x will just give us cos x. So we multiply by cos x. From there, you probably want to tidy that up slightly. So this bit on the left would have the 1 third. We've got the negative as well. The x to the power of negative 2. We can move that down to the bottom so it becomes x squared. Here, you've got the negative and the negative, which will make it a positive. 2 times half is just going to be 1, so we don't need to bother with that. We've got the cos x, which will remain in the top line, but because sine x is to the power of negative 3 over 2, move it down to the bottom. So we have cos x in the top, and then sine x to the power of 3 over 2. And remember, from the bottom we've got the root, so that means the square root. And after you work that out, it's to the power of 3, so that would be the square root of sine x cubed. And that is your answer. Example 10, differentiate f of x equals sine squared x plus cos squared x. There are two different ways to do this. So the first way, well, you could always think, let's include brackets. So sine squared x means sine x all squared. Cos squared x means cos x all squared. And from there, you could just jump into using your chain rule. So f dash x would equal, bring the power down, take one off the power. So we've got two sine x. Uh, to the power of 1, but then would multiply by the derivative of the brackets. So if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x, so we'd have 2 sine x cos x. Do the same thing with the cos x all squared, bring the power down, leave the brackets just as they are, so we've got the 2 cos x to the power of 1, and multiply by the derivative of cos x, which will give us negative sine x. So you times that by negative sine x. From there then, we've got our 2 sine x cos x plus 2 times cos x times negative sine x. Well, really, the negative you could put at the front there, so it become 2 sine x cos x take away. And really, if you think about it, 2 cos x sine x is the same as 2 sine x cos x. So really, we've got 2 sine x cos x take away 2 sine x cos x. In other words, we've got 2 of them, and then we're taking 2 of them away, which will just give us 0. And that's your answer. There's another way to do that though. Anybody think of a different way of answering this one? How else could it be done? Mary Lou, what do you think? Excellent, well done. If you think about it, think back to last year, the year before, what is sine squared x plus cos squared x equal to? Brilliant, it's equal to one. So you could rewrite that as one, and you know if you differentiate just one, well, f dash x would equal, you got it, just zero. Well done, so two different ways to do that. Doesn't matter which way you do it, you would get the same number of marks and the same answer. Example 11, find the gradient of the tangent to the curve y equals sine 2x plus cos 3x at x equals pi over 2. So we're wanting the gradient of a tangent. Tangent's going to be a straight line. We want the uh, gradient of that. So we need to know the gradient of the curve at a certain point. How do you find out the gradient of a curve at a certain point? What do you use? Differentiation! Brilliant. So you differentiate. So we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, we don't have any root signs, so we can just jump into dy by dx. So differentiating the sine 2x, some of you may wish to go and add brackets. It sometimes makes this a lot easier to understand because it's sine of the whole thing. Same with the cos 3x, it's cos of the 3x, so include brackets around that. From there, if you differentiate outside the brackets, well, sine will go to cos, so we'll have cos 2x, but remember to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets, which will be 2. So it'll give us 2 cos 2x. If you differentiate cos, we'll differentiate cos, gives us negative sine, so we'll have negative sine 3x, but again, multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. That'll give us 3, so we'll have negative 3 sine 3x. From there, we want the gradient of the tangent. Well, the gradient is given by this formula here, but we know x is pi over 2, so we can then replace x with pi over 2. So we've got 2 cos 2 times pi over 2. Take away 3 sine 3 times pi over 2. From there then, well, 2 times pi over 2 is just going to give us pi. The times by 2, divide by 2 will cancel out. 3 times pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. From there, you can think about the graphs, think about the cos graph. If you draw that out, well, for pi, 180 degrees, you are going to be at negative 1. So it's 2 times negative 1. For the sine graph, a sine of 3 pi over 2, well, that's a sine of 
270. At 270, if you think about your sine graph, well, you'll have negative 1. So it's negative 3 times negative 1. Work that out then. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. We're taking away 3 times negative 1, which becomes add 3. Negative 2 add 3 will just give us 1. And that will be your answer. That will be the gradient of the tangent to the curve when x is pi over 2. Last one, example 12, if f of x equals 1 plus cos x all squared, find the exact value of f dash pi over 4. So for this one here, well, you're wanting to differentiate. So to differentiate this, we're going to be using the chain rule. We've got brackets here. So differentiate outside the brackets, we'd have 2 times that 1 plus cos x, leave it as it is, that will go down to the power of 1, and we multiply by the derivative. Differentiate 1 plus cos x, well 1 would disappear and cos x will go to negative sin x. So we'll have f dash x equals 2 bracket, leave that as it is, 1 plus cos x, close bracket, and the derivative of this is negative sin x. So that's what we multiply by. Let me put the negative to the front, putting the sin x to the front as well, and we'll have negative 2 sin x times the 1 plus cos x. We want to find the value when f dash x, uh, when x, sorry, is equal to pi over 4, so we can replace x with pi over 4. So if you do that, you'd have negative 2 times sine pi over 4 times the 1 plus cos pi over 4. From there, you can think about the exact value triangles, which are just here. Hello. And if you use them, well, pi over 4 is going to be 45 degrees. The sine of 45 degrees, sine of 45 is going to be 1 over root 2. Cos of 45 degrees, still 1 over root 2. So we'd have negative 2 times 1 over root 2 times the 1 plus 1 over root 2. From there, you've got the negative 2 times 1 over root 2. We can think about that different ways. You could either think about, well, the negative, you just put that to the front, and then 2 times the 1 over root 2. Well, 2 is the same as root 2 times root 2. So if you've got root 2 times root 2 divided by root 2, well, you can cancel out root 2 at the top and the bottom, leaving you with root 2. Or you could think 2 is 2 to the power of 1, root 2 is 2 to the power of a half, so 2 to the power of 1, divide by 2 to the power of a half, subtract the indices, so 1 take away a half would just be a half. So in other words, 2 to the power of a half, or root 2. Again, so there's different ways you can think about that. And we're still multiplying by this 1 plus 1 over root 2. If you do that then, well, negative root 2 times 1 is negative root 2, and negative root 2 times 1 over root 2, the root 2s will cancel out, leaving you just with the negative 1. And that is your answer. Try some of these questions, see how you get on with the chain rule with trig. It is in the TJ Higher page 227, exercises 4A and 4B. Good luck. Any problems? Let me know.